Thanks for listening. This is Brian Hurley from Business Performance Improvement. The podcast Lean Six Sigma Bursts are short lessons, comments, Q&A, and insights. If you have a question, send your question through the Anchor app, and we might feature you on a future episode. Or contact me at biz-pi.com. In this podcast, I'm going to share a video clip of an interview done by John Barnett. He used to work at Boeing in the South Carolina plant. This is on TMZ, and you'll ha- I'll have a link to the video in the notes if you want to watch it yourself. He worked 32 years for Boeing, and seven of those years he was quality control manager before retiring in 2017. And he recently had a whistleblower complaint against Boeing related to some of the issues that they've been having. So I'll let, have you listen to the interview, and then I'll add some comments. The video is about two minutes long. The FAA is saying that the plane is now safe to fly. Uh, What do you say? One, this is not a 737 problem. It's a Boeing problem. Um, And I know the FAA has gone in and they've done due diligence and inspections to assure that the door plugs of the 737 are are installed properly and the fasteners are torqued properly. But my concern is what's the rest of the airplane? What's the rest of the condition of the airplane? And the reason my concern for that is back in 2012, Boeing started removing inspection operations off their jobs. So it left the mechanics to buy off their own work. So what we're seeing with the door plug blowout is what I've seen with the rest of the airplane as far as jobs not being completed properly, inspection of steps being removed. Um, issues being ignored. My concerns are with the 737 and the 787 because those programs have really embraced the theory that quality is overhead and non-value added. Um, So those two programs have really put a strong effort into removing quality from the process. When I first started working at Charleston, I was in charge with pushing back defects to our suppliers. And what that meant was I'd take a group of inspectors and actually go to the supplier and inspect their product before they sent it in. Well, I'd taken a team of four inspectors to Spirit Aerosystems to inspect the 41 section before they sent it to Charleston. And we found 300 defects. Some of them were significant that needed engineering um, intervention. Um, When I returned to Charleston, my senior manager told me that we had found too many defects and he was going to take the next trip. So the next trip he went on, he took two of my inspectors. And when they got back, they were given accolades for only finding 50 defects. So I pulled that inspector aside and I said, did Spirit really clean up their act that quick? That don't sound right. And she was mad. She said, no. Said the two inspectors were given two hours to inspect the whole 41 section and they were kicked off the airplane. Let me pause for a moment to tell you about our sponsor, Creative Safety Supply. Creative Safety Supply is a great resource for free guides, infographics, and continuous improvement tools. I recommend starting with their 5S guide. It includes breakdowns of the five pillars, ways to begin implementing 5S, and even organization tips and color charts. From red tags to floor markings, it's all there. Download it for free at creativesafetysupply.com slash 5S. So I'm not going to get into the details about his recent death while he was in the middle of giving a deposition about the case. That's a whole nother rabbit hole to go down. What I wanted to talk about was some of the comments he made. As part of process improvement, we definitely are looking at non-value added activities and inspecting work is considered non-value added. However, what's also non-value added is letting problems get to your customer or letting problems get further along the process. We do non-value added activities like inspection to stop problems from getting further. But the task of doing the inspection is non-value added. We want to eliminate and reduce those. But the only way you can do that is you remove the source and the causes of the problem in the first place. If you don't address those issues, they will come back and they will be more painful if you let them escape, especially to a customer. So. They're, they are considered non-value added, but you cannot remove them until you remove the problem that's creating it. So once you've eliminated or mistake-proof those problems, you can then 
cut back on the inspection. But if you are finding problems, like he talks about, even when they do some shady things about not giving enough time, we do not want to hide or ignore problems or skim over problems or downplay issues. That is not process improvement. That is not lean methods or Six Sigma methods. It's about getting to the heart of the real problem with the real data, not trying to cover it up or hide it or make it seem not as bad. That is not how you improve. No one would support any kind of improvement effort that was geared around this. We talk a lot at Six Sigma about the measurements and the data quality, and that just throws a bunch of red flags up to me hearing stuff about not, not trying to count as many problems or saying, oh, they only had 50 problems now, but not even giving people an opportunity to count all those. I don't trust that data, and you shouldn't either, and that is not the goal. We have to get as good a data as possible so we can actually know what to go address. This is where it gets into problems when we have to report up our metric and we're afraid or there's fear about reporting bad news. If that is a culture in your organization, you will never get to the maturity and the progress you need to make. And it sounds like this is a cultural problem going on at Boeing. Again, I don't have all this information. This is just this person's interview, but I did want to dispel this myth that just because something's deemed non-value added, you go and you eliminate it. We want to eliminate it. It's non-value added, but it's worse if you let it escape and you can't eliminate it until you reduce and eliminate the source of what's causing it. So if you're finding issues, you can't stop inspecting. You have to keep that in there, but there's probably better ways than inspecting to find these issues. We can't rely on humans being careful and diligent all the time. That is a recipe for failure. We have to design systems and mistake proofing to prevent that. Mark Raven has a great podcast. I'll link that in the show notes where he talks about this issue and how the concept of mistake proofing came along and why that's a critical part of any kind of quality program. I'd like to hear what you think too. I'll put a question in the Spotify app and see what your thoughts are about this issue. Thanks. LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com has a list of glossary items about popular process improvement terms along with a history of Lean and Six Sigma methods and key influencers like Dr. Edward Stemming, Henry Ford, Taichi Ono, Shigeo Shingo, and many more. You can also learn how to access affordable Lean and Six Sigma training and certification. Visit LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com.